Hi, this is Ron with YodaConnectors.com. Today we're going to be talking 7M GT. And no, we're not going to be talking head gaskets, ARP head studs, and the knock knock who's there. We're going to be talking wiring harness, various components of that system. This is going to be more of a general overview. Future videos like this will be in more depth to the various components of the system. Today we're going to be looking at my test bar, which has been named the Rat Suit, or Ratitude, or just the Rat. It is the zero Fs given car, thrown together with a bunch of random parts I had laying around and uh, a Yoda Connectors rebuilt wiring harness. So it is in fact a NAT, however, 7M GTE electronics were utilized through the entire system. The only thing I think that was excluded were two AC temp switches for the fans for the turbo version. Other than that, the harness will be identical to your normal GTE harness. So the snow that we got last night has covered up the rat, so I gotta go clean it off, pull into the garage, and then we can start going over all the various components. All right, so this is the rat. We'll see if she starts up. Good sign so far. So here we are in the engine bay of the rat. So you may notice a few things might appear out of place. But keep in mind, this is an NAT engine. So one thing I did forget to mention was that I'm still utilizing the non-turbo distributor. So between the cam position sensor and the distributor, the output signals are exactly the same. The number of teeth for the crank and the cam are the same. The actual sensors themselves produce the same frequencies because of those teeth numbers. So anyway, we're gonna start at the end of the harness and then move around the engine to the back here where it goes to the firewall. And then we'll go into the cab and show you the ECU and the various connectors in the place. So let's get started at the airflow meter. So here we have the airflow meter. It's about the same location it would be on a factory turbo car. So it actually has two sensors within it. One is the air intake temp sensor and the other one is the volume. So moving up the harness to the next sensor, I wanna cover is the oil pressure sensor unit. You can't see it from the top side it's actually below the intake of the turbo mounted to the block. That's a single pin connector with a yellow uh, yellow wire with a black strip. Moving up onto the thermostat housing, keep in mind there's two sensors here that, that I do not have because this harness was an NAT harness. It, the first one we're gonna cover is the uh, water temp for the gauge. So this is a yellow wire with a green stripe on it, single pin. Next one up, the a two pin. This one is for the ECU. This tells the ECU how hot the coolant is, so it can adjust fuel trims appropriately. Next one we're going to cover is the, uh, the cold start injector time switch. Moving on, we've got the cam position or distributor connector, four pins. The O2 sensor, on the turbo O2 sensor is just three wires. And we're going to move across the engine and start covering everything on that side. Okay, we'll start with the fuel injector connectors. They're all two pins, one, two, and three, four, five, and six. They're between the fuel rail and the first valve cover. Next up, six pin idle speed control valve, four pin TPS connector or throttle position sensor, and then the four pin coil sub harness connector. So normally, the uh, GTE coils sit right here and this would connect directly to that coil sub harness. But because this is NAT, I had to make us an extension harness to go from here to back here. Now moving down the harness near the fuse box, we've got the fuel injector resistor. It's for the OEM low impedance injectors. Moving down the harness and back up, we've got the check connector. 
That's for testing your fuel pump or uh, checking codes. And I'm sure back in the day they had some more features that the dealer would use during diagnostics uh, of this system. And then you've got the igniter. It's got two connectors on it, six pin and a four pin. And then below the igniter, there's actually a two pin connector going to a noise filter for the ignition system. So basically that just filters any interference that the ignition system may be subject to during operation. Then the, the uh, C1 connector right there, that is a six pin and it controls the EFI main relay and gives power to the various components, including the ECU. Now, one thing to note, over the years diagno diagnosing uh, various problems with these cars, the C1 connector does attribute you know, occasionally to uh, no start conditions if it's not properly seated and connected. So the main, uh, like I said, the main power for, for the ECU comes through this connector. The constant 12 volts from the battery goes to the ECU so it can remember codes or various variables that it gets, uh, get, that it modifies during operation. And it also has the exciter wire for the EFI main relay. So moving back up the harness, underneath the uh, throttle, posi or, or throttle position sensor, it, there is a drop of two connectors. One is the two pin for the fuel pressure bump VSV. Now on this car, the fuel pressure regulator has been swapped out with an aftermarket unit, so that connector has been removed. So the other connector down there is the first knock sensor connector, arguably one of the most important connectors when it comes to the actual operation of the engine. Then behind the throttle body, there's another drop. There's a little bit more going on back here. So you've got the second knock sensor connector, the heavy gauge wire going to the starter exciter, then you also have two engine grounds. And a thing to note on those, during the many years of diagnosing various electrical problems with the engine harnesses, the 7M, if somebody is tinkering with them, head gasket, whatever, and during assembly, the check engine light doesn't come on or they just get a no start condition, but one of the first few things I tell them to check are those grounds. So if those grounds aren't connected, the EC won't power up. So, Adjacent to the grounds, you've got another two pin VSV connector for the EGR system. Now back up to the main harness, moving back, it comes up and you've got a two pin connector coming over here to the has horn. Now in my experience, most of those don't work anymore, but believe it or not, the rat has a functioning ha or, uh, alarm system. So I just left it. So back to the harness, the main body goes across the engine bay. And then we've got a two pin connector near the VSV uh, for the, or excuse me, near the heater control valve. So that's, that VSV controls vacuum to that valve. So when the heater controls say, you know, I want heat, that valve would open and let the coolant, the hot coolant go through the heater core. My experience, most of those don't work. So a lot of them are bypassed. So the vacuum just opens them up all the time. Now, after that, the harness bends down and goes into the firewall. So now we can move inside the in, or excuse me, we can move inside the cab so we can look at the various connectors in the ECU there. Okay, so here we are inside the cab of the car. So this is the main body of the harness that comes in from the engine bay. So here is where it starts to split off into a various, uh, various components. The first thing we're gonna cover is the hack sensor. This is only applicable to the pre-89 turbo models. In 89, they actually moved the sensor to be internal to the ECU. Next up, we're going to cover arguably one of the, arguably the most important connector. Because without the B1 connector, the ECU wouldn't turn on, the starter wouldn't function, the ignition system wouldn't have power, and you would just be having a bad day. <laughs> then you have the B2 connector, which is for the ABS speed sensor for the five-speed models. In this case, this car does not have ABS, so it was part of the engine harness, but not part of the body harness. Uh, on automatic transmission models, this connector would be almost completely filled with the various switches and solenoid controls that the automatic transmission needs. And then the M1 connector. This is a 10-pin connector that uh, sends all the signals to the gauge cluster for all of your gauges. So water temp, tachometer, oil pressure, and there's actually a ground for the, um, for the gauge cluster in this connector as well. Oh, and the check engine light goes through this. Then moving up the harness here, we've got an, we've got uh, another split, and it goes to the th and this is a pre-89 ECU, so it's got three ECU connectors, and then a fourth one coming off the side. So 
the um, the turbo models have this only on the pre-89s. And then there may be on some models another small uh, three pin connector that's near the ECU and that's for the AC temp switches. Now because this is an NAT harness those wires and components were completely removed so that connector is no longer here on the engine harness and it just never was here on this non-turbo body harness. So then that brings us up finally to the actual ECU itself. Now, between pre-89 and post-89, they'll always be right here. Sometimes there's a traction ECU or something else on this side, but this is pre-89, so it's fairly simplistic. So that pretty much covers it for the GTE harness. Granted, this was a very specific NAT application, but it's very applicable to a standard GTE harness. So as I was compiling the various components of this video, I did realize I forgot two connectors. The four pin ABS connector, which is located near the rear knock sensor, and the two pin backup light switch connector, which is actually located near the switch itself on the side of the transmission. Now, a thing to note with the Yoda connector's rebuilt harness, I will make that into a sub harness. So if you ever have to pull the wiring harness off of the engine for whatever reason, you don't have to go underneath the car to that switch to unplug that connector. You simply unplug the connector at the bottom of the intake manifold with the other ones in that vicinity. So, in the future, I will be making more videos like this pertaining to the 7M GT and its various components. For instance, the ignition system, the uh, circuit open relay fuel system, and even the EFI main relay. So if there's anything beyond that, those topics that anybody wants to see a video on, just shoot me a comment here or shoot me an email, ron at yodaconnectors.com, and I'll start putting together some information and try to get a video together so we have something to reference in the future. So thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.